Hi right, guys, Squall here. Welcome back to another Flight Sim video. We are back in Tivat. If you watched the previous video I did on the uh, with the Phoenix A320 Airbus, then you'll know that we flew into uh, Tivat, which is in Montenegro. Uh, that's where we are again today, although I have changed aircraft and changed livery. Uh, we're in a little bit of a retro one. It's a Greek-registered uh, Olympic livery. It's got some cracking liveries uh, with the Phoenix. It comes with like 180 liveries or something. Everything from retro stuff up to modern stuff. So I thought, hey, you know, this isn't a flight that would normally happen anyway from Tivat to Skiathos. So let's just slap on a little bit of a retro livery. Like early 2010s, I think this thing was active. Olympica.com. But it's a, it's a beautiful day. We should be landing down at Skiathos um, probably as the sun is about to set, if not setting. Uh, let me just quickly show you uh, the route for today. Let me just bring up the uh, the browser, which is this one. Uh, there we go. Right. So, the flight plan itself goes from Lima Yankee Tango Victor to Lima Golf Sierra Kilo. Tivat to Alexandros Papadiamandis, Skiathos to you and me. Um, that's got the G Fenix, that's fine. OAL 42. We're using the Fenix profile on Simbrief, which somebody made available at Simbrief, which is nice of them. So we're trying the profile out today instead of the standard A320. Uh, we have uh, two and a half tons of trip fuel, about six tons planned in total. Our flight will take us out of runway 32. We're on live weather. Uh, the last one Quebec departure, we'll have a look at that in a second in Navigraph. Um, more or less straight through. This is a Euro Control approved uh, route. Down into what I call the Tesla One Charlie. I'm not sure what that stands for. Uh, we're looking to pick up runway one. We'll probably do the R Nav approach, I think it is. Uh, cruise altitude, flight level 370. Our route looks like this. There's Tivet, so we'll be coming out on a fairly straight line departure. Well, actually, 180 departure and then a straight line and then down into Skiathos. Uh, the vertical profile today looks a bit like that. So, like I say, flight level 370. And if we have a look at Navigraph, you can see the departure here. Looks like out of Tivat. It's a, it's a left turn to miss out those hills right in front of us. Uh, left turn straight out. More or less the missed approach from the last landing, if you remember. More or less the missed approach before it then goes off to Lasty. Uh, then it heads straight over the, uh, which country is this? I can't remember. This is Montenegro. Can't remember what country this is. And then over Thessaloniki in Greece. And then we come down into uh, this VOR DME here is called Skopolos. Skip for short. And 01 is actually a runway that's orientation. Therefore, if we can pick up 01, it's, it's light wind down there. So 01 is a nice approach. We should be able to pick up uh, VOR NDB via skip. If we have a look at what that looks like, it looks like this. Uh, so you go over the top of the VOR on this island, and then you kind of track southbound and back. This is about 10 nautical, something like that. But we'll go through it in the aircraft and make sure we set up our constraints so we get a nice safe uh, approach, etc. So that's that. Um, if you want to, you can skip past this bit and just go straight to taxi. It'll be segmented in YouTube if you want to do that. But let's go and set up the aircraft and get everything loaded up and ready, and then we'll make our way out. All right, welcome on board the flight deck. Uh, it is panel slate loaded, so nothing at all has been set up. Uh, let us begin, as usual, by loading the flight in from Simbrief into the AFP so it knows where we are. Your plan is off. That's fine. I've skipped time back an hour. I'm if I flew this now, it'd be pitch black when we got to Skiathos. Uh, uh, and I don't want that. So uh, we're going to take off a slightly later time than what it theoretically had planned. So I've loaded that in, but we're on live weather. Uh, departure, as you can see, no significant weather. Even the arrival is like non-existent wind, really. Cab okay. Should be fine. Let's get this loaded up. Load aircraft. Eight minutes. That should give us some time. There we go. Started to do that. Jump down here. We'll do the usual thing of loading the flight in it in. And the aircraft is sail number OAA, which is Olympic Airlines 42. 
So that's that loaded up there. Bring that in, and while it's doing that, we'll go OAL42. Flight number can go in. That's all in. That's loaded. Cost index is 34. Uh, and as I said, flight level 370 is our planned cruise. Um, nav accuracy upgrade. Interesting. GPS primary. Okay. Um, we will put in the init B because, as I said before in a previous video, um, actually, no, we won't because it's not, it's not ready yet. Ignore that. I ignore me. We won't do that yet. Let's have a look at the flight plan page. Uh, departure from Tivet, I think we said was runway 32. And then the lasty one, Quebec, I believe, was the departure. Let's install that, or insert that, I should say. Climbing left turn, that looks to me to be what is expected. And then we'll set up the arrival as we get down there. So yeah, T TSL, Tesla. So that'll bring us into Tesla. Now, if I show you, we, we can load this now because it's unlikely to change. Um, if we go for NDB01, I think it is, is what we were planning, isn't it? NDB01. And then we go via skip like that. Then it should look like what we saw so get rid of that discontinuity just straight from tester to skip get rid of that insert it and bingo there we go so if we have a look at this and I'll just turn the constraints on so we can see what it's got set up by default so by default it's saying skip by 4,000 4,000 here 2,000 by here um, we will need to put in some runway headings and things and fixes and we'll probably review this as we start descending just to make sure this is what we want. Uh, 185 knots here seems a bit quick. Um, but it depends where the intercept is. So we'll leave it for now. We've got it loaded in. It's unlikely to change between now and then. But what we'll do is we'll nip over to Navigraph and we shall import those plates so we've got them all set up. So we'll import the flight plan uh, and then we'll take the ground chart which is the airport one. There you go. So it's basically taxi to the end, turn round, out we go. There is no taxiway here. And then it's the last D1 Quebec, which is... Where are you? Last D1 Quebec. There you go. Last D1 Quebec. It's that one there. It's departure. Yep. Flying out straight to last D. That looks fine. So 6,000 is the initial that we'll go with and then we'll as we get to last two we'll have to um, review that and then ground charts we will bring is the airport briefing any use to us not really airport chart sounds good so that's what it look, looks like hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on, hang on. that's the wrong airport Skiathos well like looking at this thinking hang on a minute that doesn't look like Skiathos. <laughs> it's just a single runway. That's more like it. There's Skiathos. So zero one comes in. We'll more or less have to turn around most likely because it's unlikely we'll stop by then. So yeah, you can just turn around and come back. Uh, the arrival we're looking for, Tesla One Charlie, which brings us straight into Skip. And the approach, as we said, will be a zero one. There it is. So now we can see where the initial fixes are. Uh, 1,600 feet by FQ01. So I, I think that's something that we're going to have to check. Uh, so by 10 DME, we need to be 2,000 feet. Now that's 10 DME there. So we probably want to change the constraint here to be 2,000 feet. And then by FQ01, if we are not established at 1,600 feet, then we need to be going around and going around is literally flying over the top of the airfield, routing back to uh, skip and back over the top again. So fairly straightforward, but um, it, is a, it is a lovely approach, this Giathos. It is a beautiful little island. Um, the runway is actually uh, not flat. It's actually, if you've landed on zero one, it's fine because you're going uphill, uh, but the reciprocal is not so much fun. 
so let's do what's that zero zero eight so one eight eight is the reverse track of that let's get some fixes in for ourselves uh one eight eight down at Skiathos. so fix in for um airfield lgsk lgsk so our reference point and then 188 will be the radial we'll put a 10 nautical mile radius in and then go back to flight plan just stick it in plan mode and we'll just double check what that looks like this is not necessary it's just stuff i like to do um, but you can see the 10 nautical mile radius here um, so by the time we, we're reaching here, we want to be activated the approach phase by by here certainly, and um, be arming the localizer and approach mode so that when we come around here, it can just pick it up, and then it should slow us right down. We can go gear down uh, at six nautical. So you know, in theory, you, you know, if you re if you really really wanted to, you could give yourself a six nautical mile. Uh, go back to fix info and then go to uh, page two. You're allowed four fixes. So back to uh, page two, LGSK. And then you could just go six radius like that. And there you go. So you know by the time that you get to here, six nautical miles, you want to be going gear down, full flap. And then you're, you're down on the glide at that point. So it's stuff you can put in uh, to help you, just to give you little clues and stuff. You don't have to. Let's see how we're getting on, on the old loading screen. While we're doing that, We'll just bring this up and make sure we get this pre-selected for runway 32. Dry service. Surface. We're going to be going flat 1 plus F. No toga. Uh, packs are going to be on. So once the passengers are loaded, which they... Come on. Four more people. Four more people. We timed that perfectly. The briefing lasted exactly the amount of time of boarding, which is just about right. There we go. Boarding is complete. So 58.1, 30.6. And we can punch that in if we can actually get the right instrument. So we go back to the init B page and forgot what it was already. 58.1, 30.6. 58 58.1, 30.6. We'll stick that in there. A block fuel is 5.9. And uh, if we went over to here, we should have received the initial. Oh, we haven't received the initial message. That's interesting. Should have received the initial loading message, but we've not, funnily enough. Okay. Curious. Um, let's get the doors closed now. So all this is closed up we've just got the ground power chocks and cones are still present so what we'll do is we'll go up to the overhead we'll check everything up here to make sure everything's where it should be uh ground power so it's fine so we'll do master arm get the pumps turned on start up the apu so we can disconnect from ground power there we go while that is firing up uh, I shall quickly jump back to here and we will bring up my flights and we'll have a look at the current departure it is 1011 011 set both sides set and it's showing 000 it's fine so they're all lining up and we'll go back to this departure thing because we'll need to calculate our takeoff so we'll sync the final load sheet. Sync the live weather. Calculate that. 37, 37, 40 and 62 on the temperature. Seven thirty-seven, sixty-two 62 on the temperature. Flaps 1. I still haven't printed out my checklist, which I really should do, uh, but I haven't done that yet. So we'll have to go off memory for now, which is okay. We're not doing anything critical today. Right, APU is available, so external power goes off, APU bleed 
comes on. We shall now go back to here and sell everything to get away so that we can... We don't need to push back, so we'll just move the PCA, move the ground power unit, move the chocks, bring up Navigraph, Tivat, Stard, and then we'll bring up the geo-reference plate, which is there. That'll serve as well in a second. 6,000 what we've been cleared to. We shall now put the beacon light on, uh, which is that one. So beacon light's coming on now. Start. Engine. N2. This car needs to move, doesn't it? Eh? Not sure how you get rid of that. Currently, there's no way. Like, if you was using GSX back in the P3D and stuff, you could tell things to just go away, but there's no... At the moment, there's no way of saying to that thing, just go, because that it should not be here. Cool, and one is coming up. There we go. And one, the light is cleared, so we can now start. And you want. And at this point, we should have already started the chrono because the engines have come on. I think the way a lot of them run it is they, they start this when the engine starts and they start this when they're about to uh, take off. And then when they land on the runway, they stop this one and then when they shut down the engines, they stop this one and then they've got a, a track of engine run time and then actual uh, takeoff landing time. I think that's how a lot of them run it. Not everybody, I'm sure, but... Right, flight directors are on. A lot of things going clunk back right there. Should already have put, I believe, the seatbelt sign on, which I didn't. Seatbelt signs are on. Beacon is on. We have two running engines, so we can now turn off the APU bleed, and we'll turn off the APU completely. And we'll go to the flight control page. And we'll check that everything is running. So, rudder, ailerons are good, elevator's good, and pitch trim. I think we said 0 0.9 down was the calculated pitch trim uh, here. Yeah, down 0 0.1. So we'll trim that. 0 0.1 down is set. Get rid of the flight control page. Uh, park and brake TCAS is on standby. Now, at this point, we can put TCAS into auto. But we'll leave it on standby initially until we get on the runway. Uh, company message. So that's the finally the load sheet which has come through. We'll accept that. Return. And we'll put this on the flight plan page. We'll put this on the performance page. Uh, APU available. That should go off shortly. And we are ready to start taxiing. Okay, so. Parking brake is off. So basically, taxi down to the end of the runway. Turn around. Get set up and off we go. Okay, so I'm going to go flaps one. Start doing some takeoff stuff now. Going to arm the spoilers. Landing lights are coming on. Along with the runway turn off light, that can all come on. Runway's clear. Whoops. Accidentally scrolled wheel to zoom and did that. Maximum auto brake. And we can do a takeoff test. 
and we have no blue. So we're now in takeoff conf configuration. Can't talk. Now in full takeoff configuration, 6,000 has been set. Let's get some speed up here. I believe the taxi limit is 30 knots, um, but all, only when it's safe to do so. But given that we're on the open runway here, this is a bit of an uphill climb though, so... But when we get to the bottom to turn around, 10 knot limit on the turn. You see how loud that was? I really want to be able to dial that down because the cockpit noise is just about right. But when I go external camera, I do not want it to be so stupidly loud. Please give us some volume controls. Because the ones we have are not sufficient. Alright, let's get it slowed down. Not sure what that's doing there. Runway 32 is identified. Okay, takeoff config is checked. So the briefing gears departing left turn. You see the mountains in front of us. We do not want to hit that. So it's going to be a climb out followed by gear up and fairly quick immediate left turn. Uh, I will go autopilot fairly early. Normally I'd fly it out, hand fly it out, but I want to give you a nice wing view so you can see Tivat as we uh, depart. Uh, slats will come up, or flaps or slats, whatever you want to call them, will come up when we need it. Turn that back to normal now. Shouldn't have left that. And clear. Yep, that looks good. Brakes are fine, as they should be. So, we'll start the chrono now. Throttle up to 40%. Push the nose down. Engines are stable. Climb. First is set. Manflex SRS. Engines are stable. Should have gone to TCAS, but I forgot to do that. There's V1. Rotate. Positive right gears coming up. And we'll start climbing left turn. There's the left turn coming in quick. Uh, we're going to go AP so that I can get that TARA set, which is my mistake. And we shall quickly have a look at that rather splendid departure view. Look at that. Isn't it absolutely lovely? Right, quick back in the cockpit, lower to climb speed. Climb power is set. Flaps coming up now. Gorgeous. And there goes Tivet. Beautiful departure. Okay, we'll clear ourselves up to one six thousand. a few restrictions on the way but not many we've got to be above 4,000 here we've got to be above 6,000 here there's a speed limit coming through but otherwise we seem to be able to just openly climb so I think at this point we can punch ourselves up now without any ATC to flight level 370 
bring the departure up here. So this shows you where you are on the departure now, which is fantastic. So you can more or less see yourselves following the, uh, the waypoints through. And if you go back to the route page here, you can always see where you are in general on the actual route, see? Which is really cool. So, fantastic EFB. Really, really useful. Well, that is us leaving Tivet. Pass an 8,000. Well over the Adriatic now. So, let's see if we can figure out where Top of Climb is. Top of Climb before Petak. Halfway point is here. And begin our descent by Alico. Uh, we go to standard pressure. Outside, standard pressure. Um, these are not tied together on a lot of the liveries. It is one of those livery dependent things. I'll just get the landing lights off. Landing lights are off, runway lights are off. Uh, I think seatbelt signs come off now. Um, what you can do, um, it is l per livery these settings, and they've kind of chosen um, defaults for each livery based on what a carrier generally does. But for example, in the cabin, uh, controls, here you go. So EFIS Barrow Control Independent, if you change that to linked, then on this livery now, unless you save it as default, but on this livery, it will now, if you set it on the left side, it will change it on that side. So if we was to push that in and change that, you can see it changes both of them. But as soon as you jump into another livery, it will go back again, unless you save the whole thing as a default. So it's up to you. Anyway, we are well on our way out of Tivet. Bye bye Montenegro and I shall pick it up either in cruise or on the descent and we'll talk through uh, the final parts of that approach just check the weather and stuff and make sure uh, everything is as we expect We've just uh, started our descent now into Skiathos and I do see some cloud up ahead so I'm just going to double check the weather uh, and also it wants us to put in the destination data so we need to just quickly do some stuff over here on the tablet you can see where we are at the moment on the routing so just coming over on our left side will be Thessaloniki Got a major town, or well, a major city really, but you can't really see it because it's it's all a bit cloudy. Uh, so let's jump to let's scroll that up a little bit. Uh, let's jump to this. Go back to my flights. You can do this in the MCDU as well, by the way. You can get a weather request. Uh, Twenty-three Celsius, one zero one zero, variable at two knots. So absolutely fine.
23 Celsius? Yep, 23 Celsius. Is the temperature. So variable, we'll just put in zero, zero because the wind is not really relevant. Uh, for the barrow information, we need to go back to our charts and go to the approach charts, this one here, and have a look. 1,600 on the barrow. Uh, 1,600 down here is our minimums, and we'll just quickly start to program some constraints in that we're happy with. Cool, so that's uh, that's all set up now. And if we put this into plan mode a second, let's quickly go back to flight plan and we'll just step through this. Right, so this is where we're interested in, is from roughly from skip onwards which is here. So skip SKP has 4,000 feet, which is what we punched in there. Uh, and we go back over to the chart. So 4,000 feet when we're here, there is a hole there. So if this was busy, you'd, you'd be sent into a hole at this point. Um, but that won't happen today. That will put you 3 DME in a straight line from there. By the time you get out here, you're 10 DME. This is D230 Juliet which is this thing here. So it's basically saying we should be 2,000 feet at this waypoint here, 230 Juliet. So let's go and put that in. Um, not that it doesn't appear to have it, unfortunately. Let's go back up here. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have that waypoint. I don't think, unless it was further back. Oh, there it is. I'd gone too far. Yeah, there's Skip. Actually, Skip's not got four thousand in, is it? Flight level zero four nine. So we want to be four thousand. Let's Skip. So we'll let it recalculate that. That's better. So we've got a. We've put a hard constraint now. We want to be at four thousand here. And then at Juliet, we want to be at 2,000. We'll leave it on manage speed at that point. Let it calculate that. Uh, so from Charlie to Juliet, it's got to drop 2,000 feet. So the question is, Charlie to Juliet, there is no constraint on Juliet here. Uh, so 4,000 to 4,000 and then down to 2,000. Um, we, we can leave it calculating that. In theory, if you look at this, it says 230 Charlie should be at 4,000 from here to here and down to 2,000 there, which is exactly what we've just told us to do. Uh, on this glide down here to 2,000, we definitely want to be uh, flaps 2 by the time we're here. I'm in the approach mode going around there. And then I think we said at FQ01, we need to be 1,600 and it didn't have it programmed in. FQ01-1600, it does actually have it now, uh, but I think that's a little bit too quick for my liking, uh, because at that point you need to start descending and you don't want to be carrying 185 knots at this point. So I think we'll go for 165 knots, because we're chucking the gear out at this point, that will slow us down. Uh, so 165, and then we go four flaps and descend. 165 at 1600 is what we'll aim for. 165, 1600, uh, FQ01. Just recalculate those speeds. There we go. So there you go. It's, it's starting to decel us. Uh, we had a max around that turn of 185 anyway, so that's brought that under, and that should get us on a on a nice speed here. So I'm I'm happy with that now. Happy with the uh, the approach speeds. Uh, let's go back to arc mode. Uh, and yeah, that is that's pretty much us done until we get down to uh, to skip now. 
when we get to 10,000 feet, obviously I'll put the, the landing lights on, etc. But, you know, the aircraft is itself set up, so uh, we can probably spoil ourselves with a little wing view. Actually got a slightly better view now. Thessaloniki is now behind us. Um, not sure what that spit of land is there, but look at that. There's a canal cut through there. You can see that. Man-made canal. Which makes a lot of sense. Go back to the uh, route page. We can probably see roughly where that was. Well, there you go. So there's... Uh, between this sort of island here, they've they've put a, a man-made cut through to save you having to go all the way around there. That probably... Yeah, it saves people a lot of time in boats. But there you go. Not too far now. We'll leave it on the. Uh, we'll leave it on this page here, and then it'll geo references when we're coming in there. Yeah, you see, we're on the uh, arrival stage. Catch you down at skip. Well, here we are. This is uh, the island in front of us is the one with Skip on it. Just zoom in there. And off our right wing is Skiathos, if I quickly go to the right wing view. That's where we're landing, we're circling around that way, coming in on zero one. one uh, Beautiful, beautiful approach. Really nice. I think it's a displaced landing, I can't remember, so I think the uh, it roots us in on a slight displacement. If I remember, uh, but we'll see when we get there. Uh, so we're just hitting through our constraints now. It wants us to go down to 4,000. I've actually not paid attention because we'll struggle to hit 4K now and hit that constraint. We're above profile. Yep, there's the uh, drag. Let's pull the speed brakes out. Get some more drag in there. That's that's my mistake. I was too busy taking uh, pictures and stuff. <laughs> uh, so let's take ourselves down to 2,000. Let's see. Yeah, 2,000 minimum should... No, 1,000 minimum. We'll need 1,600 on that final capture, but we should have picked up the glide by then anyway. So, we'll just quickly jump over here. As you can see, there's the chart. So, now we'll go into this. Uh, so that we can keep our eye on how we're doing on the profile. So, the missed approach is climb straight out. Uh, climb to 4,000, come back on the VOR. Hopefully, we'll go straight in first time. And we're coming back on profile. There's 4,000, so I'll retract the speed brake. And uh, this is where we'd go through our landing checklist. Those seatbelts should have been on a long time ago. Uh, we shall arm the spoilers. Uh, we'll go for, I think we said medium brake is what we were calculating. Spoilers armed, landing lights on. We should now be on local pressure, which is 1010. Just get the performance back. We don't want to arm the approach phase just yet. So yeah, quick wing view again. That over there is the island of Skiathos. Never been, but I know people who've been there and say it's absolutely great. They love going there. I mean, I'd probably go there just for this flight, just for this approach. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the right and hopefully get this approach um, it wouldn't be quite as exciting coming in on the other runway but you know you get what you're given right so in terms of setting up now uh, we want it to be flaps 2 by here so what we're going to do we're going to do a speed check and that's fine we're going to go flaps 1 just to hit what the Airbus will do is it will 
actually, what I should have done is activate the approach. That would have reduced the speed. And then drop the flaps. That's my mistake. If you activate the approach, it will reduce speed automatically. Um, but if you put the flaps down, it will constrain itself. It won't overspeed automatically. Um, so that's good. So flaps one. As we go around here, we'll enable flaps two and arm the approach. And then we'll just sit and wait until we pick up the localizer. We're going to turn on the landing system now. And everything is set. Armed. Looks good. Okay, so as we come around, flaps two. Yeah, you see we've got that LDEV VDEV. I think it's because we've got a displacement again. But we'll see. Blimey, that's done. Oh, it's nice though, isn't it? It really is. Okay, right, now we're going to arm the approach. Just mention the localizer yet, is it? Localizer, arm the approach. Yeah, it's really complaining about this. We might have to end up hand flying this thing in. We'll see how we get on. We've got a 60 ME arc here, so we know. Yeah, it's not. It's not capturing. It is definitely not capturing. Undergear signs, flaps, full. Bad nav. That's why it's not capturing. 113. No, hang on. Ah, yes, of course it can't capture anything. Scat off. It's on 326. It's an NDB. 100 above. S K C Skatos is in there, and we can put the ADF on here. There is literally nothing to capture, effectively, because the the DME is over there. There's nothing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to chuck our landing gear down as we approach. There's the glide path there. This is like a planned virtual descent according to the chart and we'll go for flaps now 60 ME you can hear the engine struggling you need the flaps okay so it's following the virtual glide down you can see the displaced threshold now so what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the autopilot and we're going to change our lateral approach Try and keep on that vertical profile, though. Minimum. So we're flying over this island. Minimums, we are visual. Everything's green, no blue. Absolutely beautiful. What is interesting though is our virtual line that we drew out. The course was 008. And I did a 188 radial coming out. But yet the I feel like the the line is not accurate. A little bit low. Let's pull up a little bit. I've got a slight tailwind. Three knots is nothing though. Let's get laterally aligned, there we go. And then we'll just catch that glide stop again. Five hundred. Okay, that's better. I'd love to give you a wing view, but I really need to focus. Somebody's stuck their boats right on the approach, though. <laughs> 100. 
50, 40, 30, 10, 5. Oh, that's a bit harsh. That ridge at the start is not friendly on your nose gear at all, is it? Yeah, that was uh, not a soft landing, let's say that. <laughs> there's, a, there's an elevation point, which is uh, something quite nasty, isn't it? I think there might be a turnaround point up here. There's an actual vertical profile which increases the angle that the kind of the wheel hits the ground at, and it's not fun. I'm tempted to float past it, but if you float past it, you've not got a huge amount of runway here. So it's definitely something to uh, to practice again. But anyway, welcome to Skiathos. A couple of mistakes were made there from me, as expected. What's that or that? Also thrust is off. I should hope it is. Right, let's uh, get the APU up and running. You can see that like, the ground goes down here and then there's a, there's a ridge there, there's that undulation there. And I wonder whether you should aim to, to touch down just after that. And then go max brakes, max reverse, rather than hit into it. That was my thought on that. Anyway, stop the chrono, turn off the landing lights. There's a Tui jet here, look. We can park here in 2A, can't we? Oh, look at that, he's guiding us in. How very nice of him. will do my man that will do you can put your arms down now <laughs> I think it's not happy with that vertical speed minus 700 that was quite a slam dunk into the ground blimey uh, right how's the APU APU is available so we can turn off the engines now and we'll put the bleeds on it is on. Turn off the pumps. Commence deboarding. Let's get the front uh, stairs going. Power is now available. So we can turn that off. Turn that off. Kill the beacon. Passenger signs can go out. And we are done. Air stairs is in. Bring the PCA in as well. All the cargo doors are open. Flight directions go off. That's that. Let's have a quick look outside. Welcome to the islands of island of Skiathos. We've got a Jet 2 Holidays and a Tui Boeing going on here. They do definitely fly here. This is a scenery I purchased. It's not the default Skiathos. 
I can't remember if it was Orbex or somebody else. Just look at that ridge though, you see it? I think maybe you should aim to touch down after that. That would be my thought if I did this flight again. But like I say, it's not, it's not a huge runway. It is angled up. Coming down the other way is even more scary because you're going downhill. And the only thing facing you at the bottom is a lot of boats and some water. So that's got to be a pretty terrifying approach, I would have thought. Yeah, the baggage has been returned. Passengers are deboarding. That is it from this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave me your comments. Let me know what you think. Obviously, the landing rate was great, right? Yes, obviously. <laughs> Definitely don't expend any oof comments. Um, but yeah, anywhere you think I should go, anywhere you'd like to see me fly, let me know in the comments below. Hope you're enjoying the videos, guys. Take care. Happy flying.